You're listening to Behind the Desk, a student's podcast. Welcome back, everybody, and how's it going? You got any projects you're working on? I know you can't answer right now, but let me know in the comments. I just like being nosy. And I always get excited when I... When, and I always get excited when someone tells me about a project because it's just so different to what I'm doing usually. And what I've been doing recently is working with a guy who's auditioning to be the voice of an audiobook. And this guy's really cool and interesting to record and talk to, really. He had lots of experience with a number of things, and it was just a very nice voice to listen to as well. So today I want to share what happened, really, and the kind of stuff that I've been deep diving into at work. As ever, if you've got any questions about anything I say today, comment down below or message me at Wellesley Media on Facebook. So, let's get started, shall we? It all began with my boss shouting, Jonathan! Which always makes me think I'm in trouble, because usually I'm called John, and people only really say my full name if I'm in trouble. Anyway, he started chatting to me about a guy that's coming in, and he wanted to record an audition for an audiobook. And because I'm the podcast guy at work, I thought he thought I should lead the session. Now, this immediately got my attention because I've debated trying to get into voiceover work and audiobooks in the past, but I thought I needed to improve my voice and get some experience, and this was the perfect opportunity to get more knowledge and information about it. So of course I said, sure, no problem. I mean, I don't think I can deny anything that work tells me to do, because, you know, it's my job. But anyway, the next day, I come in, and like a minute later, the boss comes in with the guy, Frank the audiobook guy, and the three of us just have a bit of a chat about how to do an audiobook. Because Frank had done some stuff like this before, but never a book per se. Uh, the boss, Andrew, had people that's come into the studio before and recorded audiobooks, and I was there too. Now, I got a lot of information about recording something like this, from average pay for the vocalist, to how it's produced and even the different audio standards for different streaming services and platforms, which is very helpful considering I've been trying to get these podcasts on Apple Music and Spotify. And it was just awesome to hear the experiences of Andrew and Frank, really. Um, But that wasn't everything, you know. We still needed to do... We still needed to record Frank. So basically, I talked him through the process of how we usually record something in the studio, you know, set up the booth. Uh, I think we set up the Broad Phantom for it because it's more of a, you know, you need a bit more clarity in the voice. I told him how I'd be editing the vocals afterwards. And together, we just went through what kind of things I needed to edit out. Now, this was quite an interesting part, to be honest, because I've had more of a focus on radio and podcast things. Um, so things like slip up of words and certain breaths in between talking is allowed to an extent, obviously. I wouldn't keep something if it sounded weird or unprofessional. But that kind of stuff gives the audio a lot more of a human feel to it. Now, compared to audiobooks though and editing for them, there's a lot more things we need to cut out. Basically, any breath you hear in an audiobook, you need to get rid of any lip snacks or tiny knocks, get rid of it. And if I need to move the audio due to a pacing issue, uh, I've just got to make it sound natural. Because if someone's going to listen to this book, it needs to sound professional. And flow as gracefully as someone would read it. It can't be too fast or too slow, and it can't be too loud or too quiet. So there's a lot of things to think about in terms of the technical side of recording an audiobook. But I can handle it, of course, because I'm the podcast guy. And so we attempted some recordings and we just kept going through, I don't know, about three or four paragraphs of his audition. And listening back to see what we should re-record and maybe have him read it a different way. And this happened for like half an hour. 
It wasn't anything long because after all it's just an audition so it was only about two minutes, three minutes long, max. Anyway, at the end of the session Frank was saying his voice wasn't sounding good that day and I do remember his voice on the day sounding quite nasally and he was saying he was quite ill a few days before so his voice probably wasn't as good as it could be. And I remember the way he was reading the book as well, maybe think he could be in a fable game. Kind of like a snotty, bratty kid that's rude and uptight. I don't think that's what he was going for, but that's what I heard in my head anyway. But like I said, Frank called it a day, and he wanted to wait for his voice to recover. Which is fair enough, because you don't want a bad recording for an audition tape. After he left, that's when I really dived into the editing stage. And... For something like two minutes of recording, I think I spent an hour and a half, two hours, just snipping out breaths and lip smacks. And it was one of those things where it's a repetitive task, but you need to be quite focused and on the ball constantly, otherwise you'll miss out something which will look unprofessional. So I just took my time and made sure it sounded as perfect as it could be, mainly so I could have a go at just editing for audiobooks as well. And I also did all this editing so I could give Frank an idea of what it would sound like from a technical perspective. I also decided to follow the Audible audio standards for the uploads as well, which is basically a list of requirements for every audio file uploaded to audible.com. And they were really specific. Like firstly, every audio file needed 0.5 seconds of silence at the start, and three seconds of silence at the end of the audio file. Um, every recording needed a wild track included, with a noise floor of like minus 60 decibels maximum, an average LUFS measure- measuring of minus 23 LUFS, as well as the usual 44.1 kHz sample rate, 24 bit depth, and mono recordings only. So sticking to all that was probably the most crucial part of the editing stage. I didn't want the guy to miss out on an audition for a mistake that I made. I mean the worst thing was trying to get the minus 23 LUFS right, because in order to get average you basically had to play back the entire clip from start to finish to get accurate reading. I kept running the clip start to finish and tweaking it like a decibel or half a decibel just to get that average right, because decibels and LUFS don't necessarily correlate in their scaling of just like how they measure sound but it was worth it in the end because Frank said I did a good job when he heard it so yay and I did a good thing too so go me and that was it for the session really he might come back in and record a full audiobook or he might do a couple more auditions who knows but it was definitely a really cool project to work on because I really like the idea of recording vocals and editing vocals and just the whole process of things that we hear every day. So I really enjoyed this session. So much that I've been debating once again uh, auditioning for some audiobooks myself. And I think I'd have a decent voice and I could get a few jobs so I just need to submit some auditions now. If you have any more questions about today drop me a message down below i'll try to answer it as best as i can that's it from me today i hope you've enjoyed listening to this audiobook project that i worked on i've been john and i'll see you in the next one